Hi there, here we are. The uh, last step in the uh, master model kit is, is all done. I've uh, fi finished the thing. Um, last time we were pretty much done with painting. So what it took to finish this up was to uh, put decals on. I made custom decals for the, uh, the forward windows. There was a, uh, a sheet that came with the kit uh, that was kind of, uh, had window outlines and I just sort of tr scanned, traced that over and tweaked it a bit, make it look a little better, fill it in, made some overhead windows. Um, some of these are, were from the kit on the side and the wing top. Some were scaled down from the, um, other, one of the other kits. Um, let's see other things, including the little tile patterns on the side. Um, what else we got? The the nozzles, lots of nozzles to paint and glue on. They they fit nice and, and snugly. Um, getting the side boosters mounted was interesting. You can kind of see there's these little struts around the bottom. We, we talked about those before. They're supposed to fit over the little molded on notch feature on the bottom of the booster, but there's not really a, a positive secure place. It's just a butt joint. And it, the shape wasn't right. So I tweaked these nozzles here, or, or brackets here a little bit. And there's oddly two uh, under the orbiter, which is head scratcher. Um, I'm kind of happy with all the colors, the shade of gray. It's still a little dark if you look at photos. I'm, that's why I've been tweaking these. None of these are the same. And as I get into the larger scales, they won't be the same either. I'm going to lighten them up even more. Um, what else we got? So I... I touched up some of the little square decals and this is a, a scan and reprinted energia in Cyrillic. Uh, anyway, back to these side boosters. So they get mounted on the bottom, a little dab of glue there and these little fairings that hold the nose tips on, there's no location marks for them. You just gotta line these up at the bottom and hope these are straight and parallel and glue this to the corrugated interstage wherever it happens to fall and Hope it all comes out straight, and it pretty much did. So I was happy with that. The bazillion part base looks like this when it's all done and painted. I did not go and try to fill all the seams and sink marks. It's just not worth it on this kit. So it kind well. Let's before I do that, let's compare it to 200 scale drawings, and it scales out pretty nicely. You know, it. Um, Seems to be about to scale, so that's a good thing. So let's now compare it to the STC start kit, which I happen to have right here. We'll put them side by side, and you can kind of see some of the differences. Let's uh, let's get a little different view of that here as I move the camera a bit, pardon me. Uh, you can kind of see the, uh, the difference here in this layout, and I'm not gonna stay with that very long. The, uh, there are some differences. Um, I, if I were to build more of these, I would go with the STC start kit. One, because it's easier to find. It's got more detail in the bottom area here. These little, um, I'm not even sure what they are, but th th these little pods on the bottom of the pods is better. Of course, on the uh, Model Master kit, you've got molded on decal on those pods. The size of these is different. I think I've determined that the actual is somewhere in between. These are kind of short. You can line these up next to each other and you can see the, uh, let's see if I can get a better view on the camera here. Um, the, the, the length of these little pods is longer on this one, shorter on this one. And if you line it up on the drawing, it, it turns out it should be somewhere in between. Um, the feature here, the raised thing is a little bit too much. But but this isn't good, and the way the kit's designed, it's kind of crappy anyway. Since the start kits are more readily available, you might as well go with that. Um, you also leave a little notch here, because these are separate parts, which I love. makes it easier to paint, but that leaves a big step here at the top of this. All four of these boosters are identical on this kit, where there should be some differences. Um, they both scale out pretty close to each other. Both orbiters look nice. Um, you, you can't go wrong with either one. It's got some give and take. Um, 
The flap here looks a little small on the model master kit. Um, really, the engines are probably a little more accurate on, on the start kits. So anyway, so that's that's pretty much it. It fits on the base for the most part. I found if you tilt it, it'll sit on this goofy base. There you go. So that's um, that's the end of that. And we're already started on, we're going to the big scale next. I got the um, um, kit from Anagrand and I started cleaning up that orbiter, obviously twice as big. It's going to be twice as many seams. But I got to start getting this kind of cleaned up. There's some warpage, but it'll be fun. It'll be big. Um, I also noticed my booster for that kit, which I bought some 10 years ago at a, at a, a IPMS convention, has only three of the four strap-on boosters. The parts are missing. So I'm short a pair of booster parts. So I'll start with the Orbiter. I'm in the process of trying to contact Anagram to see if I can order some replacement parts. So you guys all stay safe and healthy out there. Enjoy the time in your work workshop and, and happy modeling. We'll be back in a few days with, um, see how we're doing on the, uh, the larger scale Baron Orbiter from Anagram. Thanks very much.